Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, how is my voice? Is the sound okay back there? It's okay. Oh, thanks. Um, hey, thanks for coming. Um, we are sorry if we tremble a bit. Not, not only our first experience is speaking in English abroad, um, but it's also very cold for us. So please be patient. I'm Gregory Mello. Feel free to call me Greg. I'm from ThoughtWorks. Uh, and I lead one of our business units that's dedicated to platforms and clouds in Latin America. Okay, my name is Marcos. I'm the CTO of B3. And I, I ask questions to you because I will talk a little in Portuguese and in Greg will translate to, more, to make more clear what I need to pass to you, okay? But my English is not so good. So, cool. so we want to tell you what our experience has been like introducing Backstage to B3. Um, and before we tell you how it how it's, has been so far, we'll tell you what B3 is about. Okay. So B3, uh, I, a little in English, B3 is the Brazil Stock Exchange. Uh, we are the, the financial market main infrastructure from Brazil. And we have a goal to make the, to, to contribute to better future for the market and the society of Brazil. That, what is the... And we have more than stock exchange. We have in our portfolio, financial portfolio, derivatives, fixed income. We provide some infrastructure for our clients and leasing vehicles and real estate services. And our technology allows from brokers to offer diversification uh, alternatives to the customers through Brazilians to make electronic transfers of money in lease vehicles. So we have a, a huge importance in the Brazilian market. And I will talk this history in Portuguese and Greg will translate because this is very interesting to know. Nós somos uma empresa de mais de 100 anos. We are over a hundred years old company. E como vocês podem ver aqui nessa foto, as na, you can see in this picture, na, em cima, as, nego top. as negociações antigamente elas eram feitas com um grupo de pessoas. The negotiations back in time were done with a group of people. Que eles juntos eles faziam negociações de preço. Together they would negotiate prices. Em uma pequena sala. In a small room. Conforme isso foi crescendo, as we were growing a gente teve que implementar algumas tecnologias manuais. We had to implement some manual technologies. Que, by the way, nós somos uma empresa de tecnologia. By the way, we are a technology company. So, então, a gente, ali você tinha na sala algumas pessoas negociando entre si e uma pessoa... So in the room we had some people negotiating between them and one single person... Vestida de branco, ela escrevia o preço das ações numa parede. Wearing white and... This person was writing the prices on the wall. E esse preço era o preço que as ações eram negociadas e a base pela durante o dia. And that was the price for the stock for the rest of the day. Então, depois que isso foi evoluindo, a gente foi implementando mais tecnologia. As we were growing, we were implementing more and newer technologies. E aí vocês podem ver nessa foto aqui à esquerda, abaixo. And the bottom left picture, you can see. Isso é como que as pessoas enxergam as negociações de ação. That's what we normally see as stock negotiation. Um monte de pessoas gritando. A lot of people yelling, <laughs> screaming. E, e conforme a, os preços, eles iam se dando match. As the prices were matching. Essas pessoas, elas conversavam com uma pessoa vestida de vermelho e branco. The, the brokers, the negotiate, people negotiating, they would talk to people in red and white. E essas pessoas iam até os computadores and they in turn would go to the computers e escreviam o preço and write the price. Então esse preço ele era atualizado ali dentro dos telões and the prices would be updated in the monitors. E dessa forma a gente conseguia ter uma variação maior de preço entre as ações. So we could then get an, a better vari variation in prices along the day. E agora, hoje em dia, essa é a forma que a gente negocia. And now the bottom right picture is the way we negotiate now. Sem pessoas, sem gritaria. No people, no yelling. E a gente trabalha 100% com sistemas eletrônicos em base de nanosegundos de transações. And now everything is electronic, done electronically and under nanoseconds. Somente para uma informação, a gente transaciona por volta de 21 milhões de transações por dia. Yeah, we transact over 21 million transactions a day. 
em, por volta de alguns trilhões de reais por mês. Around one trillion reais, Brazilian reais is like one dollar five reais uh, per month. Per month. E o que, que a gente quer se transformar? So what então, does B3 want to be? A B3 ela é quer ser a melhor empresa de desenvolvimento de software do Brasil. B3 wants to be the best software development company in Brazil. E para isso, o que, que nós temos feito? So for that, in order to get there, e esse, esse slide ele é importante porque quando a gente fala de implementação do backstage, yeah, so this this journey, this slide is important because when we speak about backstage implementing backstage, não é apenas sobre a tecnologia do backstage. It's mas, not only about backstage and its technology. Mas sim como que a gente pode melhorar toda a experiência dos desenvolvedores que trabalham com a gente. But it's about how we improve the experience for the developers and their day-to-day -day work. Então, o primeiro passo, a gente fala sobre pessoas e comunicação. So it's first step, people and communication. Então, o que que, que, que isso significa? Significa como que a gente prepara os nossos profissionais. So it means that uh, how do we prepare our, our people, our developers? Para que eles sejam os melhores desenvolvedores que a gente tem dentro do Brasil. So they can become the best developers we have in Brazil. E junto com isso, como que a gente comunica para o mercado para que a gente atraia e retenha os melhores profissionais? And together with that, how we communicate to the market and we re retain and attract more professionals. O outro passo é o que a gente chama de tech journeys. The next step is the tech journey. Aqui a gente mapeia todas as jornadas de tecnologia que a gente tem na companhia. So here we map the, the, the journeys in technologies, all of them that we have in the company. Até porque nós somos uma companhia de 150 anos. And because we are a 150 years old company. E, então tem muito processo que there's é desnecessário a, hoje em dia. A lot of, uh, unnecessary processes there. E a gente, nesse processo, a gente começa a reduzir etapas para que a gente tenha a maior fluidez possível do desenvolvimento. So we shrink a bunch of these unnecessary processes. O outro pilar, a gente junta o soft engineer pillars com tech champions. So we, next step, we try to combine the soft engineering pillar with the technology champions that we have in the organization. Yes, esse pessoal, ele trabalha para definir os melhores padrões sobre DevSecOps, segurança, qualidade. And together they define the best practices, DevOps, security, quality. E aí com isso, a gente consegue ter um padrão que a gente possa automatizar. And then we have standards and practices that we can create standards for us. Unindo and, isso, and we can automate. Yeah. Unindo isso, a gente vem com a jornada de cloud. And then we combine all this together and we go to the cloud and we start talking about cloud. Nós estamos transformando as nossas aplicações. We are transforming our applications. E movimentando ela para Azure e para OCI. And moving them to Microsoft Azure and OCI. Isso nos habilita conseguir mais automação para que a gente tenha um desenvolvimento mais fluido. Which will enable us to have more automation and have more fluidity in our software development processes. E aí o outro passo é como que a gente utiliza a inteligência artificial dentro da nossa engenharia de software. Then the next step is how we make better use of AI um, in our processes, in our software, software development. A gente usa IA para codificar, para fazer testes. We use AI for coding, for testing. Para análise de bugs, análise de vulnerabilidades. An incident resolution. Inclusive para nos ajudar em como que a gente usa da melhor forma possível o backstage. Including how we can make a better usage of backstage. E aí por fim, a gente chega no backstage em que a gente chamou de Ultron. And at the end, we get to backstage, which we now call as a product Ultron. E por que Ultron? Why Ultron? Ultron, para quem não sabe, é um vilão da Marvel. Ultron, for those who don't know, is a villain from Marvel baseado com inteligência artificial with some artificial intelligence e a gente fala que ele é o nosso vilão da burocracia and we say that Ultron is the villain of our bureaucracy so ele tá aqui para matar toda a nossa burocracia he's gonna destroy our bureaucracy <laughs> e tudo isso junto faz com que a gente tenha atinja o nosso tesouro with everything combined we're gonna achieve our uh, treasure que é a produtividade, qualidade e eficiência. That is productivity, quality and efficiency. Cool, thanks, Marcos.
Um, and I'm from ThoughtWorks. ThoughtWorks uh, is a software development uh, consultancy. Um, we combine uh, strategy, design, and technical excellence to create amazing solutions for our customers. We have uh, a globally distributed presence. Um, we have, other than Latin America, we have presence here in North America, in Europe, Asia, um, in Oceania, um, and we have, we, you might have seen some of uh, our content out there. We have thought workers that have written over 100 books. Uh, we provide this um, artifact that we call Tech Creator every, uh, twice a year. We give the, uh, our inputs on um, recommendations on technologies we provide it to the community, and the technology radar has been used as a guide for many of our uh, clients and many companies that we see um, in the industry. And we got together. Um, we actually met before B3. Um, Marcos was in another client. We, we were talking about backstage there back then. It wasn't his responsibility then. Um, it is now. And Marcos moved to B3. We started talking about developer experience to now. And we, we understand that there is a lot of waste. There is a lot of, um, there's a lot of friction. And there is a cost on this friction for developers. This is a industry average that we compute and we normally use to talk to clients on the cost of developing software that we normally don't see, or the cost of a bad developer experience. Um, but you can take some of this math to your organizations if you're struggling to promote and, and get your voice um, to stakeholders like Marcus that can sign, on the, uh, sign the check and say, hey, go ahead and start the project. It takes a lot of time for, you, for us to replace a professional when this professional lives in an organization. On average, we take 43 days to replace this person. It, it is a hit, a strong hit on our time to market. It, it can compromise the ability for teams to hit their marketing targets. And once you have a professional in your organization, um, this person might take too many weeks to get productive. We were talking about uh, a case, cases in Brazil that sometimes it takes a new professional in some of the organization three weeks to get a, a virtual machine so that they can start coding um, remotely. It is almost a month monthly salary of a profession. And if you hire 400 people over a year, you pay almost 400 salaries. Yeah. Just, um, it, it's just waste. Um, and it's not new. We've been talking about it for a long time. In 2019, the Accelerate um, folks uh, provided a report saying that half of the people that re responded the, for the, the survey, for 30 of, for up to between 30 and 40 percent only, um, was considered productive time. Not, not just coding, but making decisions, diagramming, coming up with uh, documentation. Uh, the other 60 or 70 percent was considered waste. Sometimes waiting for other teams to respond to, to reply to your request your tickets that you had to open, manual tests that could be automated. So we understood the issues that we were facing as an industry and within B3. We, B3 knew it wanted to deploy Backstage. We had this partnership, we have this partnership with Backstage. We have expertise, we got together and we started with the Ultron. Before we joined, an API in, from its inception to production, it would take six months. It was, well, part of this time was because development teams would need to open a ticket to another team so that they would check the code and verify whether the APIs were matching the specifications, the standards. If you had a schema change of a database as part of your pipeline, you would have to open a ticket so that the DB database specialist could look at your database change um, and eventually make your comments validate and, and eventually apply. And when you decide to deploy software, even for the pre-production environments, you have to create releases. And normally, it, is a, it used to be a manual step. Create a branch, create a documentation, come up with the artifacts and move stuff around. It, it would take a long, a long time. So then Ultron comes with uh, the AI, yeah. maybe not yet, <laughs> but it comes as a villain. So now you know why Utron, I'm gonna skip that. But the way, the way we did that, that we think is, um, is key for any 
uh, backstage engagement, developer experience, experience engagement, is to consider adopting a product mentality. You, you're not just adding a tool into a tool chain, your tool set. It's not just like you deploy Jenkins and now you do CI. No, there is a lot of cultural changes and technical practices that you need to develop as a team. So you need to consider um, what is the plan for that? How are you going to measure the success of adopting this solution? Um, how are you going to maintain it? Because the product is going to evolve. You need to upgrade that. There will be uh, vulnerabilities that you need to patch. Um, you need to, to see how it's going to scale for the, the amount of developers that you're going to have. How you monitor the health of it. Because if it is going to be your single point of contact for all developers, it has to scale for all of them. So you need to monitor and operate it. Consider it, a product. Consider it as a product. It's important to say that we had 2,000 professionals in IT department here. It cool. Was. cool. So 2,000 developers, 2,000 professionals overall, yeah. not just developers. So we decided that we would, when we think of the success of this initiative, we would consider three pillars. Speed of the adoption, how fast are we adopting backstage? Um, how good is it, not just the adoption and, and the product, the, the, the backstage itself and the plugins we develop and customize, but also the products at the end? And what is the, how is the community interacting with the, the solution? How frequently they use, um, how fast, once they join the organization, how fast they, they get on board? And we chose some, of the, or some key metrics for us to measure the success for this application, for this product. Um, lead time for change, cycle time, in time to first commit, we know that time to the 10th commit is getting more and more popular over, uh, over time. Uh, but time for to first commit is already good enough for us. So we decided to keep uh, tracking that. When you, look at, when you look at quality, test coverage, uh, we know that test, test coverage by itself doesn't bring quality per se, but the lack of it is a great indicator that you don't have. So we started considering coverage as a, as a key indicator of quality that is being produced, um, and the change failure rate, how frequently uh, things uh, fail um, when we are trying to deploy the software. Uh, the, the APIs and the, the products that are created uh, and onboarded into Backstage. And what's the network effect of the, of the, the, the product of Ultron? Um, how many of the workflows are started the pipelines that start and successfully finish, because you don't want developers that they start a pipeline, pipeline fails somewhere and say, hey, this is a shitty product, we don't want to use it. No. You want them to see that there's a benefit for them there. Uh, and the growth of the number of repositories on GitHub that were created through Backstage is a great indicator for us um, whether we are going on a successful path. If you see the proportion of uh, re the new repository is being created through Backstage. The higher the, 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 higher the number, like when you compare to the outside of Backstage, uh, the better it is as an indicator of usage, of adoption. So these are the key metrics that we are using to, to consider um, whether we are being successful or not. Uh, by the way, the, the slides are already on the, the app, so you can download just as it is now. There's no updates from, what, a few days ago? And then results, right? The, you don't need to see the details here, but just keep in mind that to your left, you see July, and these bars, they have different colors, and they are grouped by week. So you see July, and then you have four groups of different colors, and they are deployments per environment per week. And you can see that by September, the numbers have increased by a lot. So we're seeing that the frequency of deployment has more than doubled for many environments. For the development environment, that has skyrocketed. Um, we are considering not using the, the, the development environment as a key indicator for us because uh, we don't want to, to take an outlier and look, make the numbers look pretty for us. Um, in general, but we think it is like a, a good indicator that people are using it, they're experimenting, they're seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of their products already making use of the, the workflows and pipelines that we have developed. So now the APIs don't take six months to go to production. Now they take a single month. 
Is it a lot? It is still a lot. The technology would enable us to deploy in under a day. But from six months to one month, we've reduced to, uh, we've re we have reduced five sixths of, the, of the, the time, the total time to get to production. Now the APIs are validated automatically. So the teams, they are using a, a tool that validates uh, API specs and the pipeline will break if the API is not up to the standards. So you, there is no ticket open, there is no time waiting for another team to provide feedback on my API uh, specs. So um, that's one example of many of the steps that would manually happen after the team has considered dev complete, um, like security and vulnerability scanning. Now some of these steps we've ha we have moved in a lot earlier into the pipelines. Now the database specialists, um, they don't need to look at the Jira tickets anymore. They look at the pull requests and they can approve it. It's a lot faster for them, the whole process, because um, they have a better visualization. Not only they are seeing the, the, the schema change, but they are seeing like the, the context around the, the, the change for that schema. Um, and the tooling is much faster for us to just approve um, and, and they take their time to do something more strategic later. Later on. And releases, well, this is something easy to automate, but maybe the, the points were not connected, um, the teams were not connected well enough to understand that there are multiple steps that were responsibilities of many different teams, and now everything is combined into a single script that, that does the whole thing for them. In order to get there, you want to add anything? No. In order to get there, this was our journey, has been our journey. We started back in January with a few weeks to understand what is the context of B3, wait for the virtual machines to come up, uh, to be delivered to us, um, agree on key indicators, understand and learn what's the strategic, what are the strategic goals for the organizations. Uh, then we came up with a foundation, uh, what's the, the technical solution, the deployments, the basic plugins, and then get some pilot teams to work with us, uh, even deciding what pilot teams was already um, an important conversation for us that took a while because you don't want a team that is not critical at all for the organization to onboard because for the rest of the organization, it's like it worked for them, but they don't have the, the problems we have. So we decided to pick a team that's like, there is, there is a high criticality for them. Uh, and we are onboarding teams. We wish we were a lot further, but I think we have accomplished a lot of things already um, together. We are at the moment that we are bringing some new content into the deployment of Backstage that we have, bringing new areas, bringing new functionalities, and enabling, enabling more and more teams. We still have the, the, the difficult conversations on what's the value of, of, of what we are doing, because it's something very technical, but combined with the product mentality, we can get halfway through both sides and understand from the leadership, from the development team, they understand the value of what we're doing. Um, yeah, so hopefully this goes a long way. There's a bunch of good things that we've seen um, here today that we can bring back to B3 and see how 2024 is going to be for us. Yeah. Thank you. Um, if you want to talk more about our experience with Backsta Backstage, we, Thorax has a booth out there, just outside. We'd be happy to talk to you. Thank you. Questions? Awesome, Marcos, Gregorio, obrigado. Any questions? No questions? We're good. That's fine. Hi, this is Jayant. So how did you integrate this uh, Utron with the existing process what you already have, mm. or existing tool which you already have in your company? Yeah, so the, some of the integrations, they were easy to do, like some, uh, um, some tools that they already had at B3, we just bring plugins, connect, configure, and they, they were good to go. Some others we had to come up with our solution, like, um, the API spec validation, sure, there are toolings for that, 
but we had to adapt our pipelines to check and run, run on that. Um, and some stuff were really new, like the schema changes for database specialists. And this is something very new for them. Uh, it was really good for us that they understood the importance of their time and how much we, we could make their work quicker and safer by bringing them into it a lot earlier in the, in the process and consider using pull requests and approvals. Um, so it was not just tooling change, but also changing mentality that worked. Um, many of the technologies that B3 already had, we could just integrate with existing plugins. Um, but some others we had to um, we had to come up with our solutions and do some sort of integration, like scripts, executing scripts. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, folks. Any other questions? Cool. Cool. Thanks, Marcos. Thanks, thank Gregorio. You. Thank you. I appreciate it.